In this lecture, I will introduce IRC 37 design guidelines for the design of bituminous pavement. This is the outline of our presentation. First, I will explain the design steps involved in the design of bituminous payment followed by we will see different inputs that are required for the design. The input here are grouped into two, one is related to a traffic factors. We know that the traffic for the design are considered in terms of number of repetitions of standard axial loads. So, for the computation of number of repetitions of a standard axial load, we need traffic volume, vehicle damage factor, lane distribution factor and traffic growth. We will see IRC specifications related to this traffic parameter under this head. The second group of input here is a material functions that are used for the design. The two main material functions used for computation of stress and strains are a modulus parameter and a Poisson's ratio value. There are some other important indirect input that goes for the design of payment. So, we will see an IRC specifications related to material functions under this head. So, once we determine critical stresses and strain, so this stress and strain has to be transferred to a distress function. So, we do this using a transfer functions. So, IRC recommended transfer functions are listed in this head. So, IRC uses a software called IIT Pay for the computation of critical stresses and strain. So, we will also have a demo on the IIT Pay software. So, once we are familiar with the usage of IIT Pay software, we will see a critical example for the design of bituminous payment with a granular layer and for the design of bituminous payment with a cement treated layer. And finally, we will also do one overlay design after estimating the existing life of the payment. So, first we will start with the design step here. This IRC guidelines is called as a mechanistic empirical payment design guidelines or MEPDG. This is mechanistic because it uses linear elastic theory in computing stress strain and deformation at critical locations. The computed stress strain values are further used in determining a distress at different locations using an empirical equations that is why it is combined called as a mechanistic empirical approach. The current guidelines is IRC 37 2018. But this IRC 37 was first introduced in 1970 and first revision was made in 1984. In both the version, the designs are based on the empirical approach. This is empirical approach because we have a design charts relating CBR value, number of repetitions of a standard axial load to the total thickness of the payment and this design charts were made based on the empirical relations here. The mechanistic approach was first introduced in the second revision made in 2001. So, the layers of a bituminous payments are assumed as a linear elastic and the stress and strain at critical locations are computed uh, using a FPAPE software and this critical stresses and strains are related to distress in the payment. The distress initially considered were rutting in the subgrade layer and fatigue damage in the HMA layer. In the third revision made in 2012, the reliability functions were introduced in the computation of distress and the use of new materials such as wrap binder and emulsion mixes were introduced. In the fourth revisions, the feedback received from the academic experts and industrial experts were introduced and the current version is a fourth revision of IRC 37. So, this, I, this design guidelines are applicable for a new payment design as well as for the design of damaged payment. So, we use this guidelines for the design of payments where the traffic is greater than 2 million standard axial load. This is a detailed design steps involved in the design. We call this IRC method of design as a proof checking method of design. This is because we select the trial section and check the design criteria for the specific trial section. If the design criteria is met, we say that the design is viable. Otherwise, we go modify the trial section, redo all the computations and check the design criteria for check whether the design criteria is met or not. So, this process it iterated many times till we meet out the design criteria. So, in the assumption of a trial sections, we need a data such as what should be the number of layers here, 
what should be the thickness of each layer and what is the material property for the each layer here. So, once we get the trial section, we compute stress strain at critical locations assuming each layer to be linearly elastic. For this purpose, we need a material characteristic functions. So, for the selection of material characteristic functions, you also have to keep in mind this, this material functions depends on the climatic conditions. So, the selection of material greatly depends on the geographical locations of a pavement here. So, once we calculate stresses and strain, this stress strains are transferred to a tra distress in the pavement and we check whether the distress whatever we predicted is met meeting out our design criteria. So, for this purpose, we also need a traffic data. So, in terms of number of repetitions of a standard axial load. So, if the design criteria is met, we say that the design is viable. So, if it is not met, we go modify the trial section and repeat this process till we get the viable design here. IRC 37 recommends a 5 layered structure for this purpose. The top 2 layers are a bituminous material. So, surface layer we expect it to be a rut resistant layer and a uh, second layer we expect it to be a fatigue damage resistant layer. So, for the use of surface layer, IRC recommends to use bituminous concrete, stone mastic asphalt or a semi dense bituminous concrete and these layers are expected to be a rut resistant layer. For the binder course, IRC recommends to use dense bituminous macadam layer and a bituminous macadam layer as these layers are more fatigue resistance. So, the base layer and sub base layer can be a granular layer or it can be a bonded layer. In case if it is a granular layer, the typical example is wet mix macadam layer and water bound macadam layer. In case if you use a cement treated layer, any of the cementitious materials like cement, lime, fly ash or a soil or a combination of these material can be used for the preparation of a cement treated layers. So, the both base course and sub base course can be a cement treated layer or it can be a granular layer. The bottommost layer is a compacted layer of at least 500 millimeter thickness and we call this as a compacted subgrade layer. So, we need a layer properties corresponding to these 5 layers for the design of payments. So, in case if you see the layer properties such as modulus value and Poisson's ratio values are similar to the bituminous concrete, you can in combine consider both the bituminous layer to be a one layer and if base cores and sub base cores are granular layer and it layer properties are nearly similar, you can combine both these layer as a base and sub base cores to be as a one layer for the design purpose. So, in such case you will have a three layer structure for the design alone. So, with this 5 layered structure, IRC recommends 6 different combinations for each layers. One typical combinations of cross section is shown here. In this cross section, it includes rut resistant layer as a top layer and fatigue resistant layer as a uh, second layer. Both these layer are a HMA layer. So, this HMA layer rests on a granular base and granular sub base. And the bottommost layer is a compacted subgrade soil. So, you have a 5 layered structure. In case if you provide a granular base and granular sub base, you have two critical analysis to be conducted. One is a fatigue damage analysis and this fatigue damage is assumed to occur. We know that the pavement is a 5 layered structures and IRC recommends 6 different combinations for a 5 layers. One typical cross section is shown here. In this cross section, the pavement consists of two asphalt layer, one top layer is a rut resistant layer and bottom layer is a fatigue resistant layer. This asphalt layer rests on a granular base and granular sub base and compacted subgrade layer. If you provide this kind of a combinations, we need to perform two analysis here. One corresponds to the fatigue damage of asphalt layer and that is induced by tensile strain at the bottom of an asphalt layer. In addition to, we also need to check with the rutting of a subgrade layer and that is induced due to vertical strain at the top of a subgrade layer. The second combination recommended by IRC is the use of cement treated base course and cement treated sub base course. We go for a cement treated base course if the stress in the bituminous layer is excessive or if the granular base course thickness is too high to provide in such case we go for a cement treated base. So, this cement treated base is a stiff layer it will reduce the 
stencil strain at the bottom of an asphalt layer. So, in case if you provide a cement treated base and cement treated sub base course, we know that cement treated base layers are more prone to cracking. So, there are chances that the crack from the base layer propagates to the top surface. So, to prevent the crack propagating to the bituminous layer, we need an additional crack relief layer here between a cement treated base course and a bituminous layer. So, this crack relief layer can be a granular layer or stress absorbent member interface layer. If it is a granular layer, you can imagine a compacted granular layer of 100 millimeter thickness. This granular layer is considered as one of a structural layer for the design purpose. So, if you provide this granular layer, the number of layers used here includes if bituminous layer, if it is a two layer, two and this is a third layer and this is fourth, fifth and sixth layer structure. In case if you use a stress absorbent member interface layer, you can imagine a asphalt mastic layer of thin 25 millimeter thickness as a stress absorbent member interface layer. In such case, we do not consider this stress absorbent member interface layer as a structural member and we consider it this as a five layer structure for the analysis. The next combination recommended by IRC 37 is either base course or sub base course is considered as a cement treated layer. So, we have here base course as a cement treated layer, sub base course as a, a granular layer. In the next cross section, you have sub base course as a cement treated layer and uh, base course as a granular layer. So, if you provide a cement treated base course, you can you need a crack relief layer here. If the cement treated sub base course is provided, the above base course itself will serve as a crack relief layer and you do not need an additional layer in this case. So, in case if you provide a cement treated base course, you need an additional analysis in addition to uh, HMA layer fatigue and subgrade rutting. So, we need to check for the cracking in the base course. So, we know that the tensile strain at the bottom of a layer will be critical for a cracking. So, we determine tensile strain at the bottom of a cement treated layer and we check for the damage in the cement treated layer. If the damage exceeds the allowable value, you can just go for increasing the thickness of the cement treated layer and redo the design process till we get this tensile strain at the bottom of a cement treated layer within the allowable limit. The final cross section recommended by IRC 37 uses emulsified vitamin or wrap vitamin in the base course. So, this cross section again it is a typical 5 layer structures with 1 or 2 layer as a bituminous layer. The base course is considered here as a wrap material or emulsified vitamin. This base course rests on a cement treated base sub base and on the compacted subgrade soil. So, when you use a emulsified bitumen or wrap bitumen on the base course, we consider this as a granular material and use a modulus value corresponding to the that specific granular material and we do the design here. Once we decide upon the layer combinations, we need to determine critical stresses and strain. For this purpose, we use an IIT PAVE software here. So, this IIT PAVE software is assumes each layer to be a linearly elastic layer and determines stresses and strains. For this purpose, we need to assume the thickness of each layer, give the modulus and Poisson's ratio of each layer as an input. The layer structure is subjected to a traffic load that is a standard axial load here. We consider 80 kilo Newton sing single axial dual wheel as a standard axial load. So, if you have total of 80 kilo Newton with a 4 wheel on it, so each wheel will carry 20 kilo Newton load. So, this 20 kilo Newton load is will act give a pressure of 560 kilo Pascal on a bituminous concrete layer and 800 kilo Pascal on the cement treated layer. So, we use this contact pressure for the design. Once we determine critical stresses and strain, we need to relate this to the distress. We have seen that we have a typically two different distress, one is a subgrade rutting and other is fatigue damage distress. 
So, the rutting can happen on any of a individual layer or it can happen on the subgrade layer. If the rutting happens on the top surface, when you core the sample, you will typically see that the bottom of the surface will be straight and the top surface will be will have a permanent deformation. So, this rutting is considered by taking care of a rut resistant material usage in the top layer. When the subgrade ruts, you can see that the subsequent layer above the subgrade ruts and the top surface when you core it, you can see the rutting in both the bottom and the top of the layer here. So, the design includes only the subgrade rutting and not the rutting related to subgrade here. So, we determine the critical strain that induces the subgrade rutting which is a vertical compressive strain at the top of a subgrade and we, com we convert this to a rut depth. So, critical limit of a rut depth is considered as 20 millimeter rut depth. So, we say that the pavement fails in subgrade rutting if the rut depth exceeds 20 millimeter. The next distress is fatigue damage distress. So, we know that tensile strain at the bottom of an asphalt layer induces a fatigue damage. So, when the tensile strain exceeds, you can see the crack from the bottom propagates to the top surface and the typical cracks looks like this. We measure crack in terms of a percentage area and the critical limit is considered as 20 percent of a area to be a cracked area. So, when the 20 cracked area exceeds 20 percent surface area, we say that the pavement failed in fatigue damage. In case if you provide a cement treated base course, so we need to do an additional analysis here to confirm whether the cement treated base is without any crack. So, you assume a thickness of a cement treated base course and determine tensile strain at the bottom of a cement treated base, compute the damage ratio and check whether the damage ratio is within the allowable limit. If the design damage ratio exceeds the allowable limit, go for the increase in thickness. So, these are the three typical analysis we need to compute and for this analysis purpose, we need a distress function. So, one distress function corresponding to rutting another distress function corresponding to fatigue damage and the cumulative distress function related to cement treated base course. So, this distress functions are in terms of number of repetitions of a standard axial load so that we can relate the traffic conditions and the results obtained from this distress functions. We need a traffic data for checking with the design criteria here. So, we consider a traffic in terms of number of repetitions of a standard axial load. So, for this computation of number of repetitions of a standard axial load, we need traffic volume, traffic growth rate, axial load of each vehicle and the payment design life. So, now with all these data, you can compute number of repetitions of a standard axial load and check whether the design criteria is met here. If the design criteria is met, we say that the design is viable. Otherwise, if the rut depth exceeds 20 millimeter or if the fatigue damage exceeds 20 percent of a cracked surface in terms of number of repetitions of a standard axial load, you go modify the design. Modifying design includes for a different trial sections. It can be a different thickness or use of different layer combinations so as to get the viable design here. In the next lecture, we will see what are the traffic factors to be considered for the payment design. Thank you so much.